Hey there, investors. My name is Devin Moreno, and I'm a Baltimore City investor. I've been doing this for about uh, oh, a little bit more than three and a half years, almost four years now at this point. And I've been documenting my investing journey going from zero houses and no experience to now I own 15 houses and I'm doing flips and such. And I'm really getting a hang of this whole real estate game. But uh, what I wanted to talk to you today is about a house hacking thing or rooming houses. It's actually, this is something that I specialize in. And I want to explain to you why you don't want, well, why it's tricky to make a house hack work with only three bedrooms. And uh, I want to go into a lot of different videos of rooming houses and how to make them work. Um, and you're going to find with the numbers that I'm going to show you here, if you just have a three bedroom house, unbeknownst to a lot of people, it's kind of a lot harder to make the whole rooming house model actually work as well as a four bedroom house. So I just want to go into the basic math. This is something that many of you starting out will want to do. If you don't know what a house hack is, a house hack is using a primary in, uh, a primary residency loan to buy an investment property. Um, now, a lot of you might think of this as mortgage fraud. It's not, you are living in the property and we're gonna be going over how that affects your math, but you want to think of the property when you move out of it and while you're in it, is it cash flowing? Remember, you're not not buying a dream home, you are buying something that cash flows. Now, house hacking often uses rooming houses in where you rent the different bedrooms of a house because single family homes, the most common ones, are you know ones where they would only really cater to rooming houses. They're not multifamily as they often talk about on bigger channels like bigger pockets and stuff. You know, a lot of your most available inventory is a normal row home house. And we'll go into layout and design concepts. I talk about that a lot into my videos because you're gonna want the bedrooms laid out a certain way. You're gonna want the common areas a certain way. I talk about that a lot. But in this video, I wanna talk about uh, kind of the pitfalls with only three bedrooms. Uh, when you do this type of style house hack. So I'm gonna go on my screen here and I'm gonna be showing you my deal calculator. Now, you don't have to worry about all of the stuff going on on here on this screen. Um, there is a lot of information, but realistically, we're only gonna be focusing here, all right? Now, for any of you who have already purchased my deal calculator, you will notice the version number here on the top right. I'm on version six, working on version seven. It also calculates for burrs and flips that you're seeing down here below. But we're going to be realistically focusing on the turnkey house hack, which is, means you're not doing cash out refinance. So if you are interested in this spreadsheet, you can uh, message me in the email down below. And of course, I will always send you newer versions. If you are versions behind, then let me know. And of course, I have a record of you. So and I can send you this for free. So basically, let's go into the basic style house hack. We're going to have in Baltimore, probably the higher end that most people will often qualify who are trying to do house hacking, who are trying to get into real estate, um, are generally going to be a $250,000 house, probably at best. Now, I did do one that was a lot higher than this for my first house hack at $400,000, but this is because my job paid a little bit better than, uh, than a lot of people may have. But honestly, even still, I wouldn't recommend getting a house of that amount and the important thing to note about that is uh, you will be restricted on your later house hack is based on the one you're on and you can see that in a video where I made uh, seven pitfalls of house hacking or seven things I wish I knew so let's go ahead $250,000 house I'm going to bring this in a little bit for a lot of people who cannot see uh, what is going on here. So we're just gonna look at this data input section and look at, we're gonna look at a $250,000 house. And what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna change a couple of variables here. I'm gonna change the tax assessed value to always be 50,000 under whatever the purchase price is. I'm gonna pretend the ARV is exactly what the house is worth. So the loan amount's gonna be based off of that. I'm gonna pretend that you're always putting a down payment of 5% with a 30 year amortization and a 3% interest rate rate, which is reasonable based on today's metrics that I'm recording this video as. 5% vacancy factor. If you don't know what that is, watch my other uh, deal breakdowns where I talk about that kind of thing. Um, we're going to take the top property tax rate here in Baltimore City. And uh, that's, you know, this is where I invest and where many of you watching my channel are going to invest. Zero property management fee. Always going to assume long-term insurance at $1,200, which is about average 
a year, so $100 a month. Maintenance at $1,200. We're going to calculate utilities at $2,400. That's disingenuous. As you may know from my videos, it's going to cost you a lot more than that once you factor in internet and all those things. But we'll keep it consistent at $2,400. It doesn't matter for the purposes of this video because I want to show you why you need that fourth bedroom. And it doesn't really matter about the utilities, and I'll show you why. So uh, now we're going to go into uh, all the rest. PMI, we're going to keep it at 0.75%. Uh, uh, you're obviously going to have a different PMI rate depending, but we're just going to keep it at that. And I'm going to show you the basics. We're going to pretend you're running these rooms for 800, all utilities inclusive, included. And uh, your closing costs, we're going to say you have a seller subsidy of 2%. So your closing costs are minimal. Doesn't matter for this video, all these details, because all you want to know is the mortgage is going to stay the same. The only variables we're going to change is the purchase price. We're going to bring it down $50,000 each. And we're going to see how that impacts the deal. Okay. When we're going to change very little else. Other than that, the tax assessed value, we're going to drop with it in equivalence, $50,000 per. And you're just going to see what exactly happens here. Now, note that my mortgage with HOA and PMI, which there's no HOA here, is going to be monthly $1,624. All right, so six one thousand six hundred twenty-four dollars, and uh, that's going to be my monthly mortgage amount. And then the actual revenue that I'm making every single month, if we look uh, where we got this, it's well sixteen hundred, obviously. All right, so rent rate breakdown sixteen hundred dollars, eight hundred uh, times two. So what that does when we actually calculate it in, all right, we have. Monthly cash flow for the building is $531 and uh, minus, by the way, you're losing money every month, okay? And um, essentially you don't have an ROI in this case because you are losing money every month, but that doesn't matter because a house hack is made to make it where you are no longer paying rent. Now your rent has become $531, okay? Now here in this scenario, you have a three bedroom house and you've decided to rent two of the bedrooms. Hopefully if you follow my videos, you know to live in the worst bedroom and then rent the other ones uh, that are better, like master bedrooms and stuff like that. But ultimately here, now your new rent is that amount, $531, you're still doing well, all right? Yes, you're losing money every month, but this is a lot better than paying a lot of the average rent that you're generally gonna see. Plus, you're still making tax uh, tax deductions, you're still doing principal pay down, you're still getting appreciation in the property, so you're doing actually all right. But why do you need that fourth bedroom? Well, in this scenario, you're noticing you don't really cash flow until you actually move out of the property and rent your final bedroom for, let's say, another 800. All right, remember you're in the worst room, so arguably it might make even less than that, but let's assume all the bedrooms are the same. It's gonna be another 800. That's the only time you're cash flowing. What that means is when you leave the property, you must have it 100% occupied just to cash flow only a little bit. All you gotta do is add 800 to this, and now you're seeing you're only cash flowing $300. That's for managing a rooming house, which of course is going to have a lot more cost variables than your typical single family home. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that the average single family home cash flow is about $300. Now, all that aside, it's not really worth it. But what if you just got a cheaper house? All right, what if you just did three bedrooms but in a cheaper house? All right, let's see what that would exactly look like. All right, so now we're gonna go into this and I'm going to now bring it down $50,000, all right? So we're gonna bring this down, $50,000, bring the tax assessed down, $50,000, and change nothing else, okay? We're gonna reasonably assume the house is about the same size, just in a maybe a slower area, not as highly appreciated and all of that. Uh, so pretty much similar size house, keep the rents about the same, all right? Now you might think, well, in these higher end areas, you should get more rent, but not really. Remember, you're always going to be less than those studios. Uh, you're always going to have, uh, you know, they won't really bump a whole hell of a lot more. I mean, in some areas like D.C. and whatnot, but in Baltimore, it's not going to fluctuate too much higher than 800. You might get to 1,000 on those higher end, but you're not still doing a lot there. All right. Now, here's the reason why. Let's go into it. What's my mortgage? $1,000. $300, okay? What that means is we saved $323 a month. And if we look at that and look at the cash flow metrics, you're still losing $207. That means you're still not really making any money. You just decreased 
the property value by $50,000. Let's do it again and let's see if you can cash flow this time. Obviously, for any of you out there who might be already savvy at this, if I were to bring this down to the median average household, all right, the, the median price of a, a Baltimore City house, at least pre pandemic, is $150,000. Some sources put it as high as $190 now, like Zillow, but it's, it's let's say, reasonably $150,000, usually on most of its best years. And so this is what you're going to see of most of your average housing. We're going to bring this down to remain consistent. And what you're going to see is your mortgage, once again, going down $323.61. And uh, essentially, you're making $116. And that's it. You're not really making any more money. I mean, now you're getting cash from cash return, I guess, but you're, you're, you're making nothing. It's not, it's not really worth your time to bring the value of the property down. But in all cases, you would have cash flowed if you had had that fourth bedroom. In all the cases, you could have lived in the house, cash flow with that fourth bedroom, and now add that fourth bedroom, the one that you're living in. Okay, so you would have now rented three of them. So let's look at these numbers here. All right, you would have rented three. All right, so another one for $800. You're living in one of the bedrooms. Now, under the best case scenario, you are, and this is kind of a cheaper house in Baltimore City, you're making $800. But let's go back to that higher value scenario. So for those who need to see it, we're gonna bring this back up to $250,000, $200,000 in tax assessed value. And now you're looking at, you are cash flowing at least a little bit when you have moved out of the house. Now what's, uh, I'm sorry, when you still live in the house, I apologize, and this is the version, we have it all rented for 800 and you're still cash flowing. The reason why this is important is because when you move out of the house, that means you can have a vacancy and still be cash flowing. Not only that, when we actually input it back in our metrics here, all right, and you move out of the house, finally, then you're cash flowing quite a bit more, and this allows you to really have a solid rental with four bedrooms, and you'll have found that four bedrooms really in Baltimore, one, you're staying within the legal limit without getting special permits and stuff to get around those limits. An occupancy limit in Baltimore is four people. Um, I do discuss that in my videos and how to get around that as well, but here, you're making a lot of cash flow when you move out. This makes that rental worth actually doing. Now, of course, there are some other variables. Like I said, your utilities are probably going to be a little higher than this, but they're going to be a little higher than this in most all the variables. Okay, A four-bedroom house doesn't have to be a ton bigger than a three-bedroom house in Baltimore City. These houses actually can get pretty huge. So that is something you want to pay attention to. Just note, you're only really saving $300 by lowering the house value by $323 by lowering the house value by $50,000. But yet you make a ton more money by adding an extra bedroom. So just know I had to happen to find that most rooming houses do work better with the four and above. And of course, like I said, if you have more than four bedrooms, then you will need to figure out some ways around that under a rooming house. Uh, we'll need special permits and stuff to get around that occupancy limit. But that's all for today. Let me know if you have any questions about this and the whole rooming house model. I do manage rooming houses. So if you are worried about doing that uh, yourself and you want to do a house hack, maybe the rooming house, but you don't want the tenants to know you're the owner, maybe you don't feel like managing those tenants, I can help you with that. That is a service that I provide. I actually have a company that does so. So if you have any questions, let me know. Comment below and I'll talk to you all very soon.